Okay, I've removed the first wire so I can open the reed up and do some beveling. I bevel after forming. Okay, so my rubber bands have created a really hard, firm semicircle here for me to work with, and that's important because the geometry of beveling is, is, is important uh, for the way the reed works, uh, which I'll explain a little bit more later. So the first thing I do is I take a few swipes uh, on sandpaper, and this is 320 sandpaper, it's a little faster than 400. I like to sand the complete um, underside of the tube just to get any little uh, uh, frayed edges out of the, 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 um, the back of the reed where uh, shaping may have been less than perfect, say if my knife was a little dull or something. So I'll just do a little bit like that, okay? Now the next thing I do is I locate my, my um, thumb and my middle finger about where the second wire is going to go because I only bevel from the butt end up to the second wire. I use a short bevel and I use my, my index finger to press the cane down onto the sandpaper but my, my thumb and middle finger stop on the, on, the, on the table edge or counter edge so that I get a consistent sanding each time. So. You can count your strokes here. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Between 10 and 15 strokes on the on the sandpaper um, works pretty well. About like that. So same thing on the other side. Flip it over a few strokes for the whole length of the bark area, and then again, thumb and middle finger about where the second wire goes, index finger over top, like that. And sometimes you can see in the sandpaper where your sanding stops, and that, that tells you how consistent you've been. Okay, so that's my beveling process. Okay, so why do we bevel? Uh, there's two reasons. One is to create a better seal on the end. There's more surface area meeting uh, when the two semicircles meet, and there's a better seal there. But the other is uh, because the reed can be thought of as a very simple lever. Um, if we imagine a, uh, a seesaw with a fulcrum right where the second wire is, if you push down on one end of the seesaw, uh, the other side pops up. You see how that tip is opening up on the sides there? We want that when we bevel so that um, the low register has an easier um, uh, response and your low notes are a little more down to pitch. So I like that aspect of this way of beveling. Um, that's why I do that. That's built in. So when I put my second wire on and I squeeze the third wire in place, then that uh, that lever action opens up like that. Okay. Okay. In order to lock that uh, lever action in that the bevel imparts to the blades, I like to wire third wire first. Um, and so I'm going to put the third wire on, and it's it's important to wire it up such that there's no opening showing between the two. Um, at the bottom here. Okay, so you may need to shove it up farther on your mandrel than you're used to. Okay, so we'll, we'll tighten that down and we'll check that, check that, uh, check those seams in just a minute. Let's get that in place. Yeah, so those are together, but you see that's way up on the mandrel. So I don't worry about that because I'm going to ream so that it will fit down farther on this uh, on this mandrel. So this is my third wire, and I'm going to cut that really short, leaving just one twist on there, and I'll wrap around that. Uh, next comes the second wire, same idea here. You can check this with a ruler if you need to, but if you filed your marks on here, that probably isn't necessary. And I'll tighten that down in just a minute. I'm going to get the first wire on here next and get everything nice and snug and smooth. Okay, let's 
just make sure that's in the right place. Crimp the wire like this so that the two strands, the two wraps, um, fit together. That'll get some of the slack out of the wire as well. And always pull out before twisting. Don't just twist. Um, crimp them together. See if you can get a little more slack out. Check to see if you're digging into the sides of the cane. Try not to do that. Go up to the point where you might be doing it, and that's your, your tightness that you want to achieve. So, in order of, of tightness, I would say, although this is a subtlety, I would say the third wire has to be the most tight, second wire next, and first wire is, is snug and not movable. Uh, a good check for this is with your finished reed, take a reed out of your reed box. You should be able to wiggle the first wire when it's dry, but not move it. And when it soaks up, it is totally snug and not movable. I think that's the ideal uh, tightness for a first wire. So there's my reed all wired up. Next thing I'm going to do is wrap it. We won't show that in this video. Um, but I want to also show um, how um, the reamer that I have works. So here's the reamer. Um, there's a collar on the reamer that's adjustable. So you can adjust the depth of the ream. But... Um, the reamer only cuts in one direction, so you have to go um, clockwise with this. And when you're doing this, it's best not to shove the reamer in, but to let the blades do the work. And because we're going to ream quite a bit, it may be necessary to take the reamer out and get the cane out that's embedded in there so the cutting edges can, can um, protrude again and do the reaming. Normally I, re I ream after I've wrapped, by the way, so I get a little better grip on the reed. But um, I thought we'd just save some time and show you how this works. Okay. You can ream also uh, with this reamer. You can, you can ream um, wet, but you need a rat tail file to clean out some of the, the, file, uh, the, the shavings that are, are stuck in there. It gets a little fuzzy uh, with, with a wet uh, ream. So anyway, that's the ream, and I'll put it back on here just to show you, of course, see how much farther on that goes. Okay, and that's, that's more regulation length, I think. Um, so that's, that's uh, my reamer and the, um, the method I use for wiring. Mm -hmm.